by reflecting with us about that for a minute. And I think um, with that, we can move on a little bit to explaining a little bit more, giving more context for what PBHA exactly is. So I think I can go through this fairly quickly. And I will note that, of course, all day I've been fine, but now I'm having some internet trouble. So flag me if you can't hear me. Um, but just for people to know kind of the, the current scope of PBHA, if you're not as familiar, we have about 1,500 volunteers, um, currently about 80 social service programs and serve about um, 7,000 um, constituents. And you guys are part of um, a proud group of about 30,000 um, alumni um, who we are connected to in one way or another. Um, 140 summer internships, teen jobs, and 350 shelter guests a year. Um, the mission for PBHA, the wording has changed because I think when I first got there in 1999, it was two pages long. And so it's kind of sh continued to shrink over the years. But I think as people know, it's still about this dual mission about engaging student leaders to meet the gaps and opportunities and resources um, in our communities. And we know that that's been important more than ever um, this year. And then we've also been really intentional about thinking about how that is both through direct service, but also through um, advocating for structural change and some of the systemic issues that we're seeing going on. And Liz, this is gonna be sort of speed, speed level. So the, the scope of programs, you guys kind of know this, we have year round youth programs um, that really have generational impact for year round youth programs. One of the things that's great and maybe a little different than from when many, when many of you guys were there is that we have much more of a leadership pipeline where we have a large number of students, about 40% of the students who run the summer programs now grew up in the programs themselves and come back when they go to college. So it really creates um, a, a strong um, connection. We actually have officers and professional staff now who grew up in the program. So it really makes sure that PBHA is integrated to the community. Um, we have our two shelters. Probably for most of you, there was one shelter at the time, um, the Harvard Square Homeless Shelter, also known as Unilu. Um, but we now have the Y to Y, um, shelter, which is about five years old. And this is a new shelter that we started about five years ago, which reaches 18 to 24 year olds. And um, it really essentially doubled the number of beds that was available for that population where a lot of people first experience homelessness and then end up in a chronic life of homelessness because they just don't have a means out of it. So it really is trying to interrupt homelessness for young people. Um, we have our adult education, um, English language learners, um, and a lot of that kept going um, during the pandemic. Also elder care, um, including Alzheimer's Buddies, which is a now national program where young people connect um, with folks who are suffering from that disease and it's been shown to really stop the degeneration of their experience. Um, have different examples of kind of responding to urgent needs. This is actually Puerto Rico um, a few years ago where we went for multiple years and worked with um, local communities to, to bring sort of seeds and other um, resources that were appropriate for the climate that they didn't have um, at the time because everything had been washed away and so folks could kind of create their own garden instead of just kind of coming down and delivering immediate food. And then, you know, definitely kind of consistent working on national justice movements. This is one of the things that um, to just touch on from last year that we won't talk about as much for the pivot stuff, but the students at the same time that they were pivoting the programming to figure out how we show up for our community were also very actively engaged in thinking about how they mobilized the campus in response to um, George, George Floyd's um, murder. And so um, they started a series of um, webinars called So You Want to Be an Anti-Racist that they've continued throughout the year um, to really make sure that there's dialogue um, across different groups at Harvard um, and thinking about how to take action. And then underlying the program, some of the other pieces that are really important are um, the Priscilla Chan program. So we make sure that we have um, scholarship and mentorship opportunities for first generation and low income students to engage in public service. Um, they receive um, financial support and mentor support so that they can participate in service at the same level as their peers that don't have to get a job at the library or dorm crew or other places. Um, so that's a really important part of our core programming and principles. Um, in addition to, this was probably less the case <laughs> back in the day, but kind of it, it sort of having, making sure there's like thoughtful training, mentorship and reflection that surrounds um, the students' work so that they're intentional about um, what they're doing and make sure that they have the coaching and support that um, they need um, to have consistency over time in our communities. 
Um, and then this fun graphic, which <laughs> I'll just share, is that one of the good the pieces of good news is that public service really is at a place where um, at Harvard, where there's a lot of emphasis and new things happening and elevating public service um, across the board. And so um, the landscape um, is is constantly changing, but there is a um, new center for public service and engaged scholarship. The vision for that is to be an academic center that is a place to link um, and really elevate public service as it's happening across the board um, at Harvard. Um, PBHA is um, part of the center um, and as well at, as the uh, Mendich program for engaged scholarship, which is a relatively new program that is helping students link their um, their work that they're doing in public service to their academics. Um, for so many of the students, I said I've been there 22 years, and I think for most of those years, students had this like choice where they felt like their like their lives were being like wrenched in half, and they kind of had their academics and then um, PBHA, um, and or had to make sense of it themselves. And so this has been a way um, where um, faculty they can connect it to their studies, um, and with the vision of the studies making their service stronger and their service making their um, academic um, experience stronger. Um, and then just also like a lot of other great um, initiatives that are happening to think about how we engage people, send the message that public service is a really important part of a um, Harvard undergraduate education. Um, so that's kind of PBHA today. I will stop for like, see if there's like one or two questions because that's not the main emphasis, but it's really helpful to know what PBHA is today before we tell you what we pivoted um, and what some of the changes were. Any questions? Um, I know some of that may be different than your guys' time. Some of it's more familiar. Amazing. Okay, so then Fahad's going to pick it up back where Lizzie was saying, you know, imagine it's March 10th and you have to be off campus in four days. Yes, it's hard to imagine. Uh, it was so hard in the beginning. Uh, when we first learned we have to evacuate campus in four days of March last year, we we're mainly overwhelmed on two fronts. Because PPHA student volunteers run the programs, we're concerned about the impact of shutting all those programs down, especially for children who are already dealing with so much turmoil. And most critically, our shelters, which if closed, would mean putting people on the street with an increased chance of COVID exposure and honestly uh, having a life or death situation. We had already closed our prison education and elderly services for the safety of the residents. PBHA also had a high number of students who are low income, first generation DACA, and face economic and other barriers to getting home from not being able to afford storage to not being able to cross the border. So we partnered with the Harvard Latina Alliance and first gen alumni group and put a call out to our wonderful alumni community for support and we're so grateful over 250 people responded in a matter of days with emergency funding to support students most in need and to help us keep the shelters open with offers of places for students to stay and store their belongings. And because of all that and honestly the wonderful support of our alumni network, we were able to keep both shelters operating until uh, until it closed to the end of until close to the end of the normal season and have managed to keep the Y to Y shelter, which is mainly a shelter for youth ages 18 to 24, open with the help of the city throughout the pandemic, which was especially critical as it is the only shelter in Cambridge exclusively serving this vulnerable population. Where they could, students quickly continued to tutor uh, and connect with children, adult English learners and buddies in the elderly homes on Zoom. The prison education programs were the most impacted because computers and other devices were not allowed in the facilities, although we managed to change that this fall. After the shelters, we quickly thought about our next biggest challenge and decided to pivot to figure out how to pivot, how to pivot the 11 summer urban programs to operate remotely, especially given the fact that our children and families have the fewest resources. Yeah, so um, obviously a huge challenge for us was figuring out how to, like Fahad said, pivot our 11 summer programs. Um, so SUP last summer probably looked very different from if any of you did SUP when you were at Harvard. Um, so we were fully remote um, with both synchronous and asynchronous um, portions, including asynchronous like physical activity um, for for young people to make sure they were able to still get outside and um, keep moving. They all had 
what, at least one one-on-one -on -one check in every week with their senior counselor um, and we continue the academic support that we always have with at least 30 minutes of reading um, and math every day um, and also huge emphasis on social emotional learning which is always true at stuff but was especially true last summer um, just because of everything that was going on with the pandemic um, so in order to provide that support we we're able to provide a technology device for every child. So for the younger kids got iPads, the older kids um, got Chromebooks. And we we're also able to provide them with other supplies necessary for projects and clubs at camp, like art supplies, science kits, um, and health and wellness materials like yoga mats and pedometers um, and jump ropes. Um, so all of that was really amazing. And even despite the pandemic, we were still able to have an absolutely wonderful summer. Um, Particularly incredible is that we had 90% attendance across all of the camps. Um, so even in the middle of a pandemic, even when Zoom fatigue is very real, kids still wanted to come every day. Um, and also we're able to continue to honor all job offers that were made pre-pandemic, which was really important for student leaders who were counting on those jobs, as well as maintaining youth job support for um, the Boston area high schoolers who serve as junior counselors in the sub camps. Um, and looking at our surveys that we conduct every summer at the end of the summer, the results were actually as strong, if not stronger, than they are in in-person years. Um, so this slide shows, I think it's the parent survey, so talking about how what their child experienced. And even in a time when uh, children were disconnected, children were able to build new relationships, find adults and friends they trust, um, they were able to learn new things, and they were able to learn about, or they were able to learn more about their identities. Um, another really incredible thing that we were able to do was provide gift cards um, for groceries for families that were experiencing food insecurity um, during the pandemic. Obviously, there was a lot of increased unemployment or people just unexpectedly having new costs. So that was a really amazing thing that we were able to support them with. Um, and then for student leaders, um, so these are questions that are asked of college students about service experiences across the country. Um, and even in a time when everyone was feeling really ho helpless, I know I was feeling really helpless and powerless, feeling like there was nothing we could do, there was still an increase in students uh, feeling like they were able to contribute to the well-being of their communities and of the greater Boston and Cambridge communities. Um, yeah, so still we're able to have a really fantastic summer um, with a lot of self-love, so that was really wonderful. And we're so grateful that we're able to take everything we learned from SUP and to apply it to our term time programming. As Maria noted in the chat, the YWI Harvard Square Homeless Shelter, the only shelter that serves 18 to 24 uh, year olds, we never shut down throughout the entire pandemic, offered shelter to more than 50 young people, and then amazing, amazing news of having eight young people receiving permanent housing. Over the summer, in addition to SUP, we also kept our adult ESL programs and we just adapted to figure out how can we best teach English over a Zoom setting and in addition over the summer it was an incredible summer in addition we also uh, we also piloted a so you want to be an anti-racist workshop series for in the wake of George Floyd's murder we just decided we need to do what is necessary to help more and more people not just be non-racist, but honestly, anti-racist. Uh, going from there, it was hard to start the semester and envision what an open house might look like for all of these new first years who probably never heard about PBHA. And uh, it was hard planning it, but it, 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 came, it was a lot of fun to see so many first years come to our first ever virtual open house and to be able to transition over 35 of our programs to a virtual setting and we were able to do that because we just consolidated a bunch of the programs and we just decided what are the needs that we need to meet and then which programs can we still run to meet those needs and i'm so grateful to say that we've met every single one of those needs uh, and what is pbha without trainings we want to keep make, ensure that like, the training that we're offering um, in person is the same quality as what we're doing virtually and so we're able to adapt 
the advocacy and organizing workshop, which is a, an annual course that that teaches you all about organizing and how to take direct action for any advocacy initiative that you're passionate about. We also had the tutor mentor training uh, certificate, and that's for all people who want to work with youth. And we were able to do our nonprofit management intensive, which is a week, uh, a week and a half or so before the start of the second semester, just teaching our new student leaders, the new officers of the PBHA board, exactly <laughs> what the nitty gritty details about running a, uh, a nonprofit like PBHA. Uh, this past November, we have had our first cold service with Toronto Burke, the founder of the Me Too movement. And following that weekend, we were able to have an incredible alumni weekend. Uh, I'm very, very grateful for this, uh, for HS, HS for not for being able to go beyond what we typically do in the normal season and expanding our outreach program. So making sure that we can go out every night to give out food, warm supplies and resources for any shelters or any other place that can help them just overall um, preserve well hygiene and stay safe during this pandemic. And currently we're piloting uh, in the wake of the eviction crisis, we, this is one of the needs that we felt that we needed to meet. Uh, we took $20,000 in seed funding and we are going to pilot a anti-eviction support program and that will be in the form of providing grants and no interest loans to our families who are at risk of eviction. And yes. Awesome. So looking ahead after this um, school year, we are looking forward to a hybrid sub model, which we're calling the summer of joy. Um, so students will have online curriculum as well as outdoor play um, in small pods um, in public parks um, and continuing to sustain direct aid for families um, like the grocery gift cards, which we did last year. Um, the Harvard School Homeless Shelter is reopening after renovations which have been ongoing to meet COVID safety standards and make sure there's sufficient um, ventilation. The Why Do I Homeless Shelter is going to return to the student leadership model after a year of leadership which was supplemented by paid staff as was mentioned earlier. Um, the eviction support program HOP like Fah had just mentioned um, is has started up this school year um, and we're also really looking towards what we're calling the lost generation which are students that have never or have barely ever been in a PBHA program in person have never been in the building and making sure that we're um, really supporting them by strengthening our alumni connections and connecting them with alumni mentors um, which we're hoping hoping to, to really flush out this summer and moving into the fall. Um, and also extending funding similar to Chan Stride for first years so that they also don't have financial barriers to participating in service. Um, and yeah, we're, we're really thinking a lot about how to intentionally bring students back into leadership positions because so many of PBHA's programs rely on a sort of apprenticeship model for teaching leaders. Um, so people have been taught have been in programs and taught by previous leaders while they're like as a volunteer or counselor or something. Um, and since that didn't really happen because programming this year was all online, we're thinking a lot about how we can uh, still have student leaders for, you know, the next however many years, um, even though we have this quote unquote lost generation. Yeah, we have, I mean, imagine this. We have student leaders who have never been in the building and have never driven a van. In fact, the vehicles and spaces coordinator is like, I don't even know what the vans look like. So it's a very huge disruption to um, what PBHA is. I will say the other looking forward thing is though, as you guys, as many of you know, like you're just in constant hamster wheel motion with like nonstop sort of programming and what's kind of coming up next. And in some ways, We've had to have an interruption in programming, so we're really looking to, as we come back in the fall, see this as an opportunity about what can we do better or differently, put down, not drop, but like how can we just reimagine our impact a little bit more in a way that we haven't had the opportunity to do um, otherwise. Um, so this is the how you can help, right? Um, I will say, you know, your guys' voice really matters. Um, alumni voice matters. Um, as um, public service is expanding, at Harvard, that's important for you know the administration and leadership to hear that this is something that matters to to alumni. So please, like, keep 
saying that that's important and that you think that this kind of like grassroots community-based um, service is important um, that's student-led. Um, uh, I'll let uh, Ayana take this next part, um, maybe a little bit later, um, but there are some key events that are coming up. Um, we have um, a sub auction um, that will um, uh, be about uh, supporting the summer program this coming year um, that I think um, David said he shared on the website or other places, so you should have information there um, and other great events that happen throughout the year. So, you know, come join us, interact, get to know the current students. They really learn a lot from you. Um, we, uh, you know, PBHA is still a 501c3. Um, we uh, don't get direct um, support um, from uh, a lot of direct support from Harvard funding and have to raise at least half of our budget every year of the $4.2 million. Um, and most of that is through alumni and foundation fundraising. So um, the good news is things like my salary and other people's salary are covered by endowments. So all the donations <laughs> that come go directly to the programming and the work that the students are doing. Um, and in the summer programs, the students are, the summer programs that we run, um, the students still have to raise their own salaries. They're still the only um, summer um, internship positions where um, Harvard students have to raise their own salaries um, and are not funded by an existing program. Um, and then, you know, get involved, like see what's going on, on social media, hear the stories, um, spread the word. And I'm just gonna close by maybe giving Ayana, um, probably like a minute, Ayana, just about, you know, PBHAA. Um, so people can get involved. So we have time for questions. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry. I call Kane <laughs> while we were doing this. I'm still at work. I apologize. <laughs> However, um, it has been such an honor. Um, this is my third year um, with PBHAA and it's been um, just wonderful connecting with alumni. I think Maria kind of said some of the ways that you could, you can connect um, the so sub auction auction is coming up. We always support that. I love um, sharing with uh, yep. PBA alumni to support maybe the camp that you um, were a part of while you were alumni. I do, I do that every year. And um, so I share out with my social media, like look up your camp. They had a really nice link last year where you could just go to your camp and then kind of click and donate whatever you want it or your money would support like a yoga pack or all those different types of things. So those, that's a great way. Um, we also are working on um, being mentors to some of the SUP directors this year. So if you did a SUP program and you are interested in um, being a mentor to one of our, the Harvard students that are running SUPs, that would be phenomenal. Last school year, I, I was part of Franklin IO when I was, um, in, uh, in PBHA in Dorchester, um, Franklin Field and Franklin Hill, and got to live there, loved that community, stayed the year after, and I would, got to work with the, them this summer, and that was just phenomenal working with that camp again. And um, I also got to work with all of the sub directors just, um, just to give them some tips because we had already been virtual um, as a school, so to see, to show them some creative things that they could do. Um, in the virtual realm <laughs> with students and still keep them engaged. So those things are coming up. We do have a newsletter that we would love for you to be a part of. If you are not receiving that newsletter, maybe you could put something in the link and we can make sure that you um, receive that as well. Um, and then we also love to spotlight alumni. We love for um, former PBHers to we have do spotlights on them so that students can kind of see the different things that you can do um, after working and, and volunteering at PBHA and all the different fields. Like you don't have to go into education. I just did. I say all the time that everything that I learned at PBHA, I definitely used in my career and I, and I had a heads up because I was doing those things as a 17 year old that other people were not doing. I was hiring people at 17 and other people were not doing that. <laughs> so I knew how to do all those things when I went into my career. And so, um, and I attribute all of that to PBHA. So we would love to have your support. Um, and of course we, we do um, fundraise for PBHA and, and advocate for PBHA to the college. So, I probably took over a minute. I am so sorry. <laughs> it's all good. You know, you know what I said a minute too. I knew that. 